Okay, let's take a deeper dive into this. For more, we're joined by Mike Bako. He is a sports editor at the DailyNational.com. Mike, thanks for a lot for coming in. I know we don't want to take away from the game. Starts in a few minutes here. <laughs> now, no one throws a party like New Orleans, and it's a great site for this year's Final Four. So what does March Madness mean to college basketball, mean to the NCAA, mean to all the programs? Well, you mentioned it there, the billions of dollars that are that are on the line. Certainly when it comes to the money that's that's in play for college sports, college football dwarfs everything. But close behind is the NCAA basketball tournament on the men's side. And this year in particular, as you mentioned, that NIL uh, that's coming in, it's somewhat of a leveling of the playing field for the athletes. They see how many billions of do dollars Turner and CBS is paying for the rights of these games. And this is the first year, the first time that they can legally get paid <laughs> for for sponsorships. That's the key where there's certainly there's been many, many years and many, many decades of under the table dealings, recruiting violations, things like that. But this is the first year that a lot of these players can make money on and off the court. And you mentioned females are really uh, leading the charge in terms of of their social media presence and finding that niche audience. Yeah, and, and good for them, too. You know, it's also interesting because the NCAA had such draconian measures for so long, and now, you know, when people read about these, the changes for college athletes, how they can profit from sports, some say it's ruined amateur athletics, others say, you know, good move, the kids deserve a cut. I'm guessing you've heard both sides of that. Both sides of that, of course. I mean, there has been this hypocrisy that's been in play when you talk about the coaches making millions of dollars. You talk about the universities selling player jerseys in their bookstores, players walking by trying to figure out how they're going to have enough money to have meals in between the, yeah. the sponsored meals that they get and they see their jersey in the window. So that that's really been the thing that has been driving this over the years. And then certainly when you think about the money that players can make, at least on the basketball side, not going to college, this will be the last year that the that uh, college freshmen, I think you'll see a lot of these star players going into college because the NBA is now making a rule where they could go straight into the draft or play in their developmental league. So this is really going to be one of the last years certainly saw it on the Duke side where you know you have freshmen leading their teams deep into the tournament I think yeah one and done we've heard a lot about that now South Carolina women I want to get to the men in just a minute here but you know good for them a great win and really got a lot of attention what is this championship going to mean to these athletes and and to the school mm -hmm. And to the school, John Staley, their, their coach, certainly one of the most prolific women's basketball players now, you know, fortifying herself as a great coach as their second national championship. And I think it's symbolic that they were able to beat Gino Oriema and UConn, the women Huskies, for so many years, 11 championships, many undefeated seasons. They were 11-0 in these championship games, and it almost become you're taking it for granted, but they now have not won for numerous years now that's a it's a drought from UConn perspective it's been about five years but this changing of the guard where every year for so many years in the 70s 80s into the 90s it was Pat Summit in, in yeah. Tennessee with the Lady Vols then it became Gino Ariema with UConn and I think it's good to have these giants that these teams strive for to try to beat we're certainly seeing it somewhat in in men's college basketball right. where you don't get much more blue blood than the Kansas Jayhawks and the, and the UNC Tar Heels. You know, I want to get to those two teams in a minute, but, you know, everybody loves the Cinderella stories. And St. Peter's, mm -hmm. for international viewers who may not know, this is simply stunning. I mean, it is. A, when we say small school, I saw uh, one story that said basically their whole campus is a block. You know, a gritty young team, <laughs> and they made it to the final eight before having the rubble burst. This is going to mean so much for, for them. I know that a couple of kids already got this NH NIL money already. Yeah, the, and, and their coach made out uh, w with a great. He's now going to, to coach at uh, a major university, Seton Hall uh, Pirates, in the New Jersey area. So it's a win-win for everyone when you see the run that they made. Uh, bursting onto the national scene, certainly their college campus being small, their program being small, but hopefully this vaults them a little bit further, gets them a little bit more nor notoriety and helps them keep their players for a couple more years. And the, look, real quickly, because we are, we are out of time, now. our producer's saying let's get out of here, but Coach K, what is his legacy? What is it going to mean? And also being knocked out by his arch nemesis in the Final Four. 
if you're a UNC fan, you feel like you've sullied not only his regular season legacy, but his tournament legacy by beating him twice. But he is up there, not even in the Mount Rushmore. There's really, there's John Wooden and there's Mike Krzyzewski. His legacy is completely sealed with his five national championships. He made it to the final four. I mean, he lost to UNC, right. the Tar Heels. That's somewhat of a blemish, but five national championships. Coach K will live on forever. I'm curious what's next for him. Mike, always a pleasure. Thanks. Mike Bako, sports editor at the DailyNational.com.